What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. The Nintendo Direct for the fall, that's all done. And we're gonna take a look back at it and kind of go through all the different games that were announced, release dates, all kinds of stuff. Cause there was a lot in there. And while I think the E3 Direct was better looking at them, this was still a really solid Direct overall. There are a lot of games announced here, a lot of stuff going on. So we're gonna go over all of that today. And we're gonna take a look at the sales charts in Japan because that Switch revision along with Astral Chain did launch in Japan to some uh, surprising numbers that you might wanna see. As always guys, enjoy these videos. Make sure you hit the like button. It does help out and get subscribed so you can stay up to date on all of the gaming news going on in the gaming world. And we're gonna start today with Overwatch. Overwatch of course is one of the games that got announced for the Switch. Technically it was leaked like eight different times before the Direct. So we kind of knew it was coming. At least they opened with it, so we got that out of the way and you know, we were good. Uh, October 15th is coming out, of course, but one thing we weren't really sure about was, was it gonna be a digital only release or would there be an actual cartridge? We'd go out and buy, you know, with the box and cover art and all that good stuff. Well, it's kind of like halfway. I mean, you can get cover art, you'll get cover art for it, of course, in a little box, but inside it appears to be a code. That's right, they're not going to release a cartridge. It's gonna be similar to the Wolfenstein Youngblood situation where you buy it, you get a code, you have to punch that into the switch, and that's just how it is. There's no cartridge. And the game seems to weigh in at about 12 gigabytes. So either way, you go out and buy it in store or you just buy it through the eShop, you're just getting it digitally either way. So to be honest, unless you really want a box with the cover art, which has that large white banner on it, I will say it does come with what appears to be three months of the Nintendo Switch online in store. So that's, I guess, is a way to kind of make it up. Although I think a lot of people would have at least preferred just to have a cartridge, but hey, they're just gonna go straight up digital code. That might be one you might wanna think about just getting digitally and not having to deal with going out and getting an empty box. Also, Game Pass is rolling along nicely. We gotta look at September's releases and of course sometimes they'll like to throw even more in as we get like halfway through the month. Well, they put out a slide of all of the releases. I got pretty excited because one of them is Metal Gear Solid. So here's the slide. Uh, we're gonna go down them real quick. They do have different dates. So September 5th, we'll have Dead Cells and we'll have Metal Gear Solid HD Edition 2 and 3. Awesome games. Definitely it should be something you download from Game Pass if you have it to check it out if you have not done that yet. September 6th, Creature in the Well, which is a, a new game. It's it's an interesting game. It's the it's the one that's like a like a action style pinball game. It dungeon crawler. It's very weird, but another good one to check out and pretty cool. It came to Game Pass right away. That's neat. Uh, Gears Five Ultimate Edition, of course, September six for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. Otherwise, the standard edition will be available for just regular Game Pass members September tenth. So of course that's their big release for well pretty much the holiday at this point. September twelfth, uh, you'll have Enter the Gungeon. You'll have Gunnery Blueberry Edition, and then they have a list of games that will be leaving on rush lego batman 2 joyride turbo explosion man the mall lego indiana jones uh shante half genie hero split second ninja guide in black and the hunter call of the wild are all leaving definitely check out metal gear uh the hd collection I, those are great games obviously uh gonna be worth checking out and then of course gears 5 if you have game pass you probably have it at least for the occasional i'll say occasion, occasional first party releases that microsoft does because those are $60 games. If you have Game Pass, then you just you just download it. So yeah, Creature in the Well is another good one to check out. They got it right away. Uh, good, good look here so far with Game Pass in September. I say so far because they always tend to throw in more games as we go along. Oh, and check this out. Jedi Outcast coming out. We'll talk about that a little later on with the Direct. Jedi Academy is following. That's gonna be next year. It's coming to the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. And get this, it's going to have online support. How awesome is this? I don't know what happened here or why this is going on, why these things are getting remastered and put on newer platforms. Uh, well, the Xbox One has them backwards compatible, but these are just straight up releases like for these platforms with online and everything. That is awesome. This is, this is amazing. Like, I'm so happy that Jedi Academy and Jedi Outcast, now Jedi Outcast appears to just be a single player, but Jedi Academy will be the single player and then the multiplayer as well. So I'm looking forward to both of these. Uh, I love Jedi Outcast. Jedi Academy, I was, I was okay with. I liked Outcast more, probably because it was a bit more focused overall, but Academy is great. We're gonna have that showing up next year at some point. We're still waiting on a solid release date with online support. Sign me up for that one. And guys, some of the quick news that way, let's get into the bigger stuff. 
let's let's just do this whole Nintendo Direct real quick because there is a lot of stuff to go over here. It was almost 40 minutes. I think it was like 38 and some change, so right in there. And there was just a ton of stuff going on. We, of course, opened with Overwatch, as I mentioned earlier, October 15th. Appears to basically be all digital, but they, Overwatch, still something people were looking for, and there it is. A Paladins has been on the system for a while now, but... Overwatch is still Overwatch, and I think people are really gonna enjoy picking that one up and playing it online against all their friends on the Switch. And then we, of course, had our Smash character, and we already knew what it was. I like, by the way, how they went down all the systems and they came back to the Super Nintendo, then just went panned right real quick, and there's the Neo Geo, and yes, Terry Bogart is in Smash. Of course, Fatal Fury, uh, King of Fighters. It makes sense that he'd be added for that SNK representation. Uh, just says in development, we're still waiting on an exact date. But of course, a lot of times they tell us the date when it's ready to come out. So it, the next director or later on or something, just drop an update and boom, he's ready to go. But Alongside of that, Banjo-Kazooie launched right away. He's out. He was out yesterday. You can go uh, grab him if you have not already. I'm sure you probably did right away if you've been waiting for him. Sakurai did a whole sit down, of course, showed us how it all worked and everything, uh, how Banjo controlled and everything, and a few other little announcements. The biggest one being that Sans from Undertale would be uh, part of like the me costume fighters and everything. Uh, what a neat thing to see that. Toby Fox even did a full remix track for it and everything. Thing, and he was ecstatic on Twitter, as you would expect, as most of us would. And what was really funny during that whole thing, going back to Banjo, well, they kind of stopped for a minute. And Sakurai told the viewers, if you want to play Banjo, go play it on the Xbox One. It's a great game and everyone should check it out. Go play it on the Xbox One. He said that multiple times and you could hear people in the background laughing. It was just, it was a fun little exchange there. I mean, Banjo Kazooie's going to Nintendo. If you haven't played it yet, I will say, on the Xbox One, rare replay, or just you just you just buy them, I believe, on the uh, on the Xbox Shop. Uh, great versions of those games. It definitely you want to check those out. We also had Tokyo Mirage Sessions, this FE Encore, January seventeenth. I missed this one completely on the Wii U. I, I heard that it was kind of a pain to control with the gamepad and there was some censorship, both of which I assume will be ironed out here in the Switch version. It will also include new story elements, a new song, new characters. Uh, they're, they're definitely, we're running out of Wii U games, right? I mean, some of us thought that maybe they would pull something like Pikmin or, or Xenoblade Chronicles X, but hey, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, not a bad thing to see. And then we got into some of the weird stuff. Deadly Premonition, was out, it's out now. You can go check out the first Deadly Premonition. The second one, Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, it's coming out next year. I have no idea how that happened either. That's another really weird one, by the way, to see that uh, show up, but really, really cool because that game has a bit of a cult following and I'm sure some people were really, really happy, a little confused even, to see that. Assassin's Creed The Rebel Collection, that's available December 6th. That's gonna have, of course, Black Flag, uh, which is Assassin's Creed 4, and then Assassin's Creed Rogue. We kind of touched on that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, December 6th, not a bad game to kind of drop in the first week of December. That's good to see. And then we had Divinity Original Sin 2, that's the definitive edition. That was also shadow dropped yesterday. Game Freak showed off town, which we talked about the trademark, that's now called Little Town Hero, and that's coming October 16th. It doesn't look like it's a very expensive game. I believe it's like a $25, $30 game, but you can purchase and preload it now. And then we started getting a little strange, a little, little off the rails here, because then we got into Bethesda, and they showed us Doom 64. Now look, I had talked about the Doom 64 trademark before. I thought it was gonna be announced and possibly shadow dropped. It's coming out towards the end of November, November 22nd, so it is a bit of a wait. This is a big deal for Doom fans, trust me. If you're a fan of Doom, you saw this and you said, wow, I, I cannot believe this is happening. Doom 64 has, for the most part, unless you count like emulation through PC, has been trapped on the Nintendo 64 this entire time and now it's getting released on the Switch November 22nd. That is a big deal. It looked great in the in the trailer that they showed for it, some of the gameplay. I'm excited. Now, here's the thing. Bethesda did kind of mess up Doom 1, 2, and 3 to a degree, right, with the login stuff and, and the sound was off and there were some performance issues, but I'm hoping Doom 64 being pushed to the end of November because maybe it was ready and they were like, you know what, we're gonna hold it off possibly, uh, gives them some time to work that out, right? That That's at least, my hope on that one. And then we got into Jedi Outcast. I, again, very weird to see this. Jedi Outcast is showing up September 24th. Outstanding game. Everyone should go check this one out. Definitely. So we don't have to wait too long, uh, just under 20 days. 
absolutely need to check that out and then check out Jedi Academy, but Outcast I think is the one to definitely grab. Single player only from what they were saying. Then we got this free to play, or at least free to start, I should say, Super Kirby Clash. It does have in-game purchases, so keep that in mind, but it is at least free. Luigi's Mansion 3 had a section where they talked a bit about screen park mode that has eight player, up to eight players in an arena style kind of battle. Pokemon Sword and Shield probably took up more time than they needed and talked a lot about curry and rice, but mostly showed off camp that you could set up and kind of visit Pokemon with your friends and everything. Animal Crossing New Horizons, had, uh, well, they just showed more Animal Crossing, so that was cool. Uh, Trials of Mana, which of course is the remake of Second and Setsu 3, that's coming April 24th, later than I thought. I thought that was gonna end up in uh, possibly March, or even February, but hey, April 24th, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, then we had Return of the Oberdin, which is interesting. That one's coming this fall. I did not really expect that one necessarily, but still pretty neat to see. Rogue Company is a new game, it looks like, from High res Studios. That's coming to the Switch in 2020. And then we see Tetris 99, which is getting a new mode called Invictus. And that looks pretty neat as well. And then Damon X Machina, demo is out now. You can go pick that one up. And that is one of those demos where the save data will move in to the full game. So good stuff there. You can basically get a head start on it for next week. And then we had a big sizzle reel, Just Dance 2020 out November 5th. Grid Auto Sport, which I thought might've been a shadow drop because they messed up the eShop listing, September 19th. Farming Simulator 20, December 3rd. Call of Cthulhu, October 8th. And then Vampire got a release date for October 29th. Overall, I, again, a solid direct. There was a lot of stuff here, a lot of content, a lot of games, release dates, gameplay, the whole thing, but we had to finish up strong and we did so with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I know it wasn't gonna be like the biggest thing for everyone, because not everyone likes Xenoblade, but this was a big deal for people who didn't get to play it on the Wii back in 2012. There was actually a store I was working at that did get a copy in and I managed to play it, but when it first came out, it was like 70 or 80 bucks at GameStop because they kept opening them and putting them on the shelves like they were doing before to, to get the full value and it was a whole thing. But that was a pretty cool way to close it out. It wasn't, I think, as big, like I said, as like Breath of the Wild 2, obviously, from E3 or anything. But overall, looking at this, solid, solid direct. And if you were someone who was disappointed with Terry being one of the last characters announced for Smash, there's gonna be a whole, probably a whole nother suite of Smash characters. They say more are coming. They could be individual purchases they do, or maybe they do another two or three. Maybe they do a whole nother fighter pass of five. It's, it's interesting to see that, and I'm sure the success of Smash Ultimate made them realize we can't leave it at just five, but that's gotta be exciting for everyone. Overall though, Solid Direct. Next up, let's talk about those Super Nintendo games. They were announced in the Direct uh, yesterday and they are out today. I don't really know when, mid midday maybe, noon, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, they're probably just gonna update the app and then you can just start playing. I'll be actually checking it out today. So if you stay tuned to the channel, you should see a video go up where we'll go through them, check them out and everything. And I'm excited because they are dropping quite a few. Let's actually go down the list here as you're seeing, starting with Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, F-Zero, Super Metroid, Super Soccer, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Star Fox, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Pilot Wings, Super Tennis, Kirby's Dream Land 3, and Brawl Brothers. Sunrace FX, as Nintendo put it themselves, is the first time it's been re-released ever. So they, they are at least gonna be picking out some interesting games, I hope. And that is, this is the best part. The Super Nintendo library is pretty large. They can pick some really cool stuff and they could still grab an NES game or two. That I think that's perfectly fine uh, to do that. You know, like, oh, we're gonna give you one NES game and two Super Nintendo games, right? And I think people would be like, okay, the idea here is probably to hold us off for another year until Nintendo 64 shows up. And then from there, who knows? Maybe they'll go Game Boy or Game Boy Advance. I don't know. but. This is big because it really helps that struggling online service that people really were frustrated with. Super Nintendo games, while I don't think it's end game for anyone, right? It's definitely a start and I think it makes us all realize that at least the online with 60 games I think now, has some worth to that $20 you're putting down every year now. And our last bit of news, let's talk about the sales over in Japan with Famitsu. Now, I specifically wanna check these out because of the hardware sales and the Switch revision has finally launched in Japan this past week, which was holding back sales, at least according to several analysts. So let's take a look. We're actually gonna take a look at the uh, top 10 for games first, and that does have Astral Chain on there. So starting at the top is actually Azure Lane Crosswave that took number one at 33,763. Astral Chain at number two, 32,200. 
236. They're pretty close to each other, about 1,500 units. Super Mario Maker 2 at 3, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 4, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Fishing Spirits, Minecraft, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and then Super Mario Party at 10. Astral Chain, that's not a terrible opening, I think, for Astral Chain, as they have been marketing this heavily to the Western audience, but I think I still could have done better. The real question is, can it continue to sell and not decline heavily? Because if they can, I think if they can get, you know, 200,000 units sold when it's all said and done, 250,000 units out of Japan, I think most of their sales are gonna come from other parts of the world. I think it's a success. I think it's already a success for Platinum and Nintendo with how they've been talking about it, how the sales have been going up. But let's take a look at the hardware, as you're seeing here, starting with, yes, that's right, the Switch at the top, 90,553. Massive jump, over 60,000 unit jump from last week at 30,000. PlayStation 4, uh, right below that, 10,924. Large difference, obviously, between the Switch and the PS4 there. Uh, the 3DS, 1,934. The Xbox One at 57. And then the Vita at 50, as they really start to get rid of the stock completely. That pushes the Switch's lifetime to date up to 8.8% million units, uh, closing on 8.9 million. Here's the, here's the thing. The switch is most likely, I think at this point, 10 million units easy this year, possibly even 11. At that point, it's, it's, it's just going to keep rolling along. And the switch will be, I think a 20 million ish unit seller, 18 to 20 million unit seller in Japan before it's all done. And they haven't even introduced the switch light and that's going to be counted in there as well. So yeah, it's, it's going to get out of control in Japan, which means you're going to see more and more Japanese support for all these different types of games. You think Code Vein's not eventually going to make it over to the Switch? Uh, it, it probably will. Let's be real. D Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, that probably will as well. Like, a lot of these games will probably go over just because the sales are out of control in Japan. And we see the numbers in the MPDs. The Switch has a long life ahead of it, and... Uh, you never know. It, it could end up as a 80, 90, even 100 million unit seller with these kind of numbers, but we'll see. And we'll finish up quickly with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Shiki Tono saying, don't forget we still got the Tokyo Game Show this year. And that is correct, we do. However, I don't know how much is actually going to be there like next to something like, it should be better than Gamescom because it seemed like Death Stranding was saving for that. Capcom's gonna be there with some stuff. Bandai Namco will be there. Sony somewhat. But I think Tokyo Game Show is going to be quite a few things where they're just going to talk about the series and panels and everything. But you will get some announcements, probably some hardware announcements, some special editions, and yes, definitely some uh, Japanese RPGs and different games. But it should be pretty exciting, I think, just in general. You want to keep an eye on it. It's going to be kind of weird for me because the time difference and everything with Japan, but definitely worth keeping up with. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about, whether it was the Nintendo Direct. What'd you think of it? Did you like it? What you think it was okay? And what was your favorite announcement in the entire Direct? Let me know. And then what about the Super Nintendo games? I'm ready to start playing them. Make sure you guys check back here because we're gonna have some fun looking through all these different games, seeing how they play and everything. And I'm glad the NES Super Nintendo online service is getting that much better. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.